Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies at Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <laughs> Resident Evil, the final chapter. Promise? Now, I'm not going to spend too much time going into the Resident Evil franchise as a whole, other than to say that I've seen them all, and they all just sort of blend together for me. You got an Umbrella Corporation, a badass beauty named Alice, and a guy that looks like Guy Pierce taking over the role of the Terminator. Blah, 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 zombies and punches and kicks and death and explosions, blah, blah, blah. You don't come to a Resident Evil movie for the plot. You come for all that zombie butt kicking. And I have to say, I remember having at least a modicum of fun with the last two entries in the franchise. Uh, let me see, that would be Afterlife and Retribution, which I counted as mindless, visually appealing, and fun action flicks, perfect for viewing in large groups of intoxicated teenagers. You know the kind of movie, junk food. So I must say that after all of that, that Resident Evil, the final chapter, isn't junk food. This isn't even junk, it's just unwatchable garbage. The movie begins with a helpful montage that narrates you through the first five movies pretty effectively, which is kinda easy when you can literally summarize the plot of all five movies in less than a minute. That's how empty they were. But things rapidly go downhill from there. Alice wakes up alone and just starts looking around her environment like you would if you were beginning to play a video game. Then she gets attacked by some creatures, and the biggest draw of these movies quickly becomes this movie's biggest Achilles heel. The action is just horribly shot and edited, and this is a stylistic choice. This isn't shaky editing to cover up the stunt doubles or mask the low budget. No, this is quick cutting for quick cutting's sake. It's the opposite of exciting. You can't get excited about action, or you can't get a sense of what's going on and where everyone is in the shot and who's doing what to whom, and they're having the cojones to release this thing in IMAX 3D, which is how I saw it. What's the use of the clarity and depth of IMAX 3D if your eyes never get the chance to take in the entire picture for longer than a few shaky seconds. We know Mila Jovovich can do the stunts. She has fantastic action hero presence. Have a little faith in that, people, and let us see, actually see, and make out a well-choreographed fight. Come on! Alice gets into a car and plays chicken with a dragon. No BS, a dragon in the first five minutes of this movie. How can you not make that? Exciting! Resident Evil, the final chapter, is chock full of this loud, incoherent, headache-inducing blur, and it just goes from bad to worse. So do I even need to bring up the poor writing? Shallow characters? What's the point? We get introduced to characters only to see them get turned into zombie food in the very next scene. Can't even tell who got munched on until the next scene and we see who's left. One member of this group turns out to be a traitor, a fact that is revealed with no suspense, no drama, and no narrative tension. It just happens. And then you find out who it is and you're like, yeah, pretty much every plot development is just sort of shrugged off, including a few late developments that are supposed to be dramatic, but the movie doesn't even frame them that way. They just happen. They get explained and we all move on. What more? I got more! How about characters doing things that make absolutely no sense from an action standpoint? There's one scene where the good guys are at the top of a crumbling, decrepit 15-story building, okay? And the bad guys, including a horde of zombies, storms the building. The good guys decide that their best tactic is to dump massive quantities of gasoline down on the zombies, then light it on fire. Boom! Hey, it sure looks cool, what you can see of it, but uh, how are the good guys supposed to get down? Huh? As you're wondering this, they show you how Alice gets down, and then they just cut, and all the rest of the good guys are down on the ground floor as well, completely safe from the flames that they just created. The movie didn't even figure out some sort of convoluted way for them to get down out of that mess. They just ignored the logistics completely and moved on. Lazy, hacky, insulting, mind-numbing, soul-crushing. I, I can't even... I, I, I just can't even. Movies like this should be fun. Resident Evil, the final chapter, is not fun. It's punishment. And I, for one, am glad it's over. Look, it goes without saying that I give Resident Evil, the final chapter, an empty bag of popcorn. All I will say is that this is the second weekend in a row that a movie comes out featuring the very sexy actress Ruby Rose. And not only is she completely wasted here and makes no impact whatsoever, it really made the other movie look fantastic and epic by comparison. That other movie was Triple X Return of Xander Cage. So that's the sort of playing field we're on here. Don't see this movie in IMAX. Don't see it in any Max. Resident Evil, the final chapter, is a real piece of crap that may even be hazardous to your health. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. Care to defend Resident Evil? Hmm? Or thank me for warning you in advance? Well then by all means, sound off in the comments below. In the meantime, thanks for watching, I'm the Colonel. Game over, man. Game over.